So we are reading At the Dark End of the Street, Black Women, Rape and Resistance, A New History of the Civil Rights Movement from Rosa Parks to the Rise of Black Power by Danielle McGuire. And our sessions are, it started June 3rd and they last until July 29th. They are from 6.30 to 8. Patricia Stevens do organized Tallahassee's first core chapter just six weeks after the trial. That fall, family students launched a sit-in campaign. A year later, they successfully desegregated local lunch counters in the spring of 1960. The sit-in movement spread rapidly after students in North Carolina demanded service at a Woolworths counter on February 1st, 1960. By the end of February, a black, uh, black college students had launched sit-ins in 31 cities and eight states across the South. <laughs> During the next three years, the nation and the world witnessed African Americans risking their lives for human rights during the Freedom Rides in 1961. Watched Bull Connor unleash snarling police dogs on black children during the Birmingham movement in 1963, heard about Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream at the Lincoln Memorial, and saw investigators pull the bodies of three voter registration workers <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> out of an earthen dam in Philadelphia, Mississippi in 1964. African American women made up the bulk of the 257 Florida A&M University students who were arrested for protesting segregated movie theaters in Tallahassee in the spring of 1963. The Tallahassee verdict proved that a new day had dawned in the South, but it was not yet a new world. During the 1960s, black women, particularly voting rights activists, remained vulnerable to rape and sexualized violence, especially in places where television crews and NAACP organizers could not go, private homes and prison cells. And so the question for that is, is it likely that any population group other than students would be the ones to lead social activism why or why not? Um. Um, I think that it is likely, but I think that students have less to lose which is why we find ourselves so active. Um, you know, we're in school. Um, like, I was on scholarship. I didn't really have, you know, I, don't have, I didn't have children. I'm not married. Me being, you know, me marching doesn't really affect my income, you know, because I'm in college. I think we have a lot more freedom, it seems, and in the, in the, in the more time, because colleges are considered so, um, so liberal, especially if you go to a liberal arts school. And because... Um, you know that's that's usually where 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 activism, if you go to college, is awakened in college, and so people just I think would just kind of expect us to do something because, not saying that we don't really do anything, but you know we go to school, we go to class, but I think if there's a time for you to to make a stand in your early twenties, is a time to do it. Like a lot of the greats did, Angela Davis, Stokely Carmichael, they were all young, they were all in their their early twenties when they when they started. Um, when they be, when they identified as activists, and um and when they and when they went on to forums and rallies and stuff, so I think it's normal. Um, I just you know. I think it's mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, I believe that. Um, I think um, you know, actually said something earlier. I think I think it's more likely. Uh, it's more. It's more likely not that other social uh, populations are activists other than young people because older people have, like when they say they have a fatigue about them, they already they have more to lose and um, the harmful load on young people is not yet developed and they don't understand the consequences of their actions when they do act, <laughs> when they are activists. You know what I mean? They don't yeah. understand. 
So they they just do it because they're full of ideas, they're fed up with the hypocrisy of the older people, and they see the injustices, they see the war, they see the planning is going down, they say, let's do something about it. And that's what young people do. They do something about it, whereas we as older people, we just want to retire. We just want our take care. That's for somebody else to worry about. <laughs> yeah. Georgette? Well, yeah, I agree with uh, both Randy and Joel. I um, I wish there <laughs> there could be, you know, another population group that w could be so ready to respond wherever the need arose to speak up and, and put their bodies in front of, you know, uh, whatever. Well, bullets, uh, tanks, <laughs> bombs, and and there are, I, I'm sure, you know, um, what is, um, you go back to China, Tiananmen Square, and uh, Egypt, you know, the Arab Spring, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, Occupy, yeah, right, and Occupy, and then and then on that point with the Occupy stuff, how we saw them be uh, destroyed. And I don't know if that was from the inside out or the outside in, but the movement, you know, we had a lot of people attacking them. Well, I'm not going to join unless I know where they stand. <laughs> you know, they, they have to stand for a specific thing. We have so many things wrong going on in the world. We can stand against everything that's wrong. And so I think a lot of people are ready to commit, you know, that way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Even the movement that's in North Carolina with uh, Moral Mondays, even though they're showing the, uh, the place of, um, it's interesting, I'm interested in it because I am from North Carolina. I actually grew up 30 miles from Monroe. But the, uh, oh. with, with the, the uh, voting rights that's in the court in Atlanta right now, the federal court in Atlanta right now, about what's going on uh, with, uh, with the Voting Rights Act. But the Moral Mondays were started by a student. Um, in North Carolina, you know that that movement, the whole Monday Monday was started by a student. And who is it? The uh, uh, Dream Defenders, you know, it, it tends to uh, you, you. Usually, you will find students at the at the forefront of um, of activist movements.